Hello. Well, it's me, Rafe, again. And uh, today I'm out at a place called The Laurels, which is a small recreational spot alongside a, a little highway here in uh, Carter County, Tennessee. As you can see, we have a little bit of a wintry mix. Uh, it's actually been pretty outstanding the last couple of weeks. A uh, lot of snow, a lot of really cold temperatures, but today's a little bit warmer. And so I'm out here actually looking for salamanders. Believe it or not, you can actually find salamanders in the middle of winter time. They do become slightly active uh, when it uh, warms up a little bit, uh, even in the middle of winter. Today it's about 50 degrees or so. And uh, salamanders are very tolerant of cooler temperatures. And so we're here to see what kind of species we might be able to see today. Uh, the Appalachian Mountains are known for having the most diverse uh, amount of salamanders as far as species is concerned in the entire world. So we should be able to find something today. Let's check it out. Alrighty, and in my uh, search for salamanders, I've come across this little ice shelf, which actually has water flowing underneath it, with a little snow-covered island towards the middle of the stream. And you hear a crow protesting my presence at this location <laughs> in the trees above me. But anyway, the reason why I thought this spot interesting is, if you'll notice, there are some tracks in the snow. And uh, they are not oval like a coyote print or a regular dog print would be. They're completely rounded and uh, the way the the foot pads are laid out I'd say it had to be a bobcat and which doesn't surprise me there's plenty of bobcats in this area we are in the Appalachian Mountains and so anyway just something kind of interesting that I thought I'd bring to your attention and let's go ahead and continue our search for salamanders shall we? Alrighty, well the salamander hunt over at the Laurels was a little bit of a bust. The reason being, uh, the ice hasn't really melted enough in that area for me to be able to access the areas where you'd be able to find the salamanders. Uh, the Laurels exists in sort of a valley, and so it doesn't get a lot of sunlight, so even though the last few days have been very mild, uh, it still hasn't melted the ice that much, and I would have to actually start walking out onto the ice shelves to approach the rocks and logs and things that I would normally turn over to find salamanders in the daytime, and it just wasn't working out. And the ice was cracking, and my feet were going through, and it, uh, it, it just didn't work out. So anyway, we've moved downstream a little bit to what I guess what you could call warmer waters. Uh, as you can see, there's actually some greenage growing in the... Uh, in this little stream that's flowing into the mainstream. I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, perhaps I'll look it up when I get home and identify it. it perhaps watercress, something of that nature. But anyway, the sun gets through this area a lot more and it's melted the ice off pretty well. Let's pause for the passing car. And once again, we're not that far from the highway. Which just goes to show, you don't have to go out and seek out the grandiose national parks to find something beautiful. You know, a lot of times, some of the most beautiful things in the world are just off the side of the road, a couple of hundred feet or so. So anyway, lesson to be learned there. Uh, always take the time to stop and check out what nature has to offer. Because she usually dishes out something really beautiful no matter where you're at. So again, I'm going to go ahead and start overturning some rocks and some logs and see what we can't find in this little area. Alrighty then, success in finding a salamander. Of course, this is a, a very small specimen, as you can tell by the size of my hand. I've got him, whoop, I've got him sitting on a leaf there because it's not really good to touch salamanders with your hand because the oils in your hand can be detrimental to their skin and a lot of salamanders actually breathe through their skins believe it or not and I'm not exactly sure what species this is but uh, I'll be sure to look it up I imagine it's some sort of a uh, probably a northern dusky salamander or something of that nature because they're very common in the area yeah, he's not liking being out of his watery home very much. So anyway, we'll have another look at him. Hello. Yeah, let's let's place him back in the water, shall we? Alrighty. Well, 
after the little salamander excursion, which by the way, obviously I didn't find any more specimens, but I didn't want to go digging around too much in there because they do use those areas to hide in uh, during extremely cold weather. I did I just didn't feel right about digging it up too much. And we found one salamander, so that's good. Um, I have found in prior years uh, many, many more during this time of year, but of course, like I said, we've had a really rough couple of weeks with uh, a lot of snow and ice. And uh, so they're probably down in their burrows more than anything else. But anyway, here's another good example of how cold it's been. I decided to drive down to uh, the Nolichucky River over in Unicoi County. You, we're in Unicoi. All right. Anyways, uh, you see this big old ice island there. It's kind of formed around some rocks about midway through the river. And uh, of course, you have the CSX uh, railroad, railroad Bridge in the distance and some mountains and again very beautiful spot and just wanted to get a look at it see how the cold weather had impacted the area and once again I'm not disappointed it's a beautiful place I saw some beautiful ice cascades along the side of the road on the way in and I'm gonna stop and get some footage of those on the way back out so anyway our trip's gonna end here but that doesn't mean that I won't uh, film a few things on the way back and definitely the ice cascades so let's check that out shall we alrighty now this is what I'm talking about when I say ice cascades is this not beautiful right in the side of the cliff face right alongside the road you can hear the Nolichucky River behind me, and it's just a gorgeous place. I'm not going to stay here real long though, because I, I am parked in the middle of the road. That's the only way I could get this shot. Uh, again, the Nolichucky River is right behind me. It's a really steep drop to the right, and so there's nowhere to pull off and park. So I, I actually had to park in the middle of the road. Uh, another reason is I kind of grabbed the attention of some uh, some locals when I was turning around. Uh, about 300 feet down the road here, there's a little housing development. And uh, well, <laughs> I use the term housing development loosely. It was about three or four converted school buses with plywood nailed into the windows and little, I guess, wood-burning stoves going on the inside because they had little chimneys that were popping up through the, the roofs of the school buses. And uh, some scary characters. Uh, when I pulled in there to turn around, I, I didn't get some very friendly looks at all. So anyway, uh, I'm like saying about 300 feet down from that particular driveway, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably call it a call it a day very very shortly. Uh, I may stop somewhere on the way back, uh, past the Irwin National Fish Hatchery on the way in, uh, which is basically a huge trout farm. Uh, might stop in there for a moment, might not. It just depends on how much time I've got left before I get back. Alrighty, here we are, Irwin National Fish Hatchery. And I don't know if you can see the trout. <laughs> I guess you saw that. They're rather active. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. There we go. Good sized trout as well. Uh, I'm looking at uh, some of these seem to be a foot and a half, almost two feet long. And the main building that shows the fertilization of the eggs and the uh, the fry, which are the baby fish and all that uh, has the educational aspects of the facility it was actually closed so the only place I was able to access was the the outdoor storage areas and that's all right we're getting some pretty good footage here I'll tell you what these buggers jump every time a, any kind of critter or anything lands on the surface wish I had a couple of fly reels just about now but anyway, once again, it's been a productive day. We're going to go ahead and call it quits. Uh, thank you again for coming along. And from the Irwin National Fish Hatchery, this is Rafe, signing off.